What's going on, guys? It is Brian and Jack with some men's comics. And if you're watching this, that means you're watching the Bolo Show. That's right. It's the Be On The Lookout Show. We come at you day after New Comic Book Day each and every week to discuss that Bolo list that hits simplemenscomics.com Tuesday and Wednesday mornings, right? That's right. Hit Simple Men's Comics on Tuesday, Wednesday mornings. It used to be on Instagram. Now the home is simplemenscomics.com. So make sure you are being on the lookout for this list. It is your new comic book day list made up of what you guys are talking about on social media. And we've got a great list this week. A lot of diverse releases from a lot of different publishers. Right. Real quick before we get into the list, if you're watching this during that live premiere Thursday nights at 9 p.m. in just about an hour or so, you can catch my San Francisco Giants taking on the L.A. Dodgers. Hope it's the beginning to a beautiful season we've waited so long for. But either way, baseball is back, so that's a good thing. But New Comic Book Day also happened this week, and there's a bunch of great titles this week, right? That's right. We're going to get into it right now, starting with the first appearances. So we just got one on the first appearance list for you this week, but man, it's a good one. And we are talking about that Ranger Slayer number one. Gave us the first appearance of what character, Jack? Well, we're getting the Dark Ranger Rita Repulsa. And this is largely overlooked. This as well as MMPR 51, these, these first appearances. Um, a lot went into the solicit for from Boom Studios for Power Ranger 53 when we knew that these Dark Rangers were going to be upon us. But like a lot of comic publishers do, you saw 53 coming and they hit you with 51. But it was very clear that Lord Zed was missing just one Dark Ranger, and we saw Rita enter the fold in the last page. Here in this issue, she fully becomes a Dark Ranger, so cool first appearance there, but you know what? That's not even what makes this book cool, Brian. Amazing reader buzz continues the story um, that we've been reading of Kimberly Hart as the Ranger Slayer in this a seemingly unending battle against Lord Zed and against uh, uh, Draken and everything else that's gone into it. And we get to see a final page in this book. Um, and, you know, if you haven't read it, we want to let you know, we're definitely going to bring up the spoilers right now. This is something we've been sitting on for a while and now we finally get to talk about it. And it's extremely relevant because we know we're getting a Draken mini series, a three issue mini series, but on the final page, sitting upon Draken, Lord Draken's throne is Kimberly in a brand new costume as a Lord Draken version of Ranger Slayer. Yeah, and the good thing about this is you talk about the first appearance, you talk about Ranger Slayer and Draken's armor, but the reader buzz on this book, the whole story is fantastic. If you haven't been reading this, this is a definitely a one shot that's worth picking up. It is at a little bit higher MSRP, but you get so much story in this. And it kind of reminds you of that Avengers Endgame final battle on a much smaller scale. Definitely. But still, that cinematic experience all takes form on those pages, right? That's right. That's right. I like the one per store variant uh, in this one. Definitely the secret cover. Amazing. Um, this is a book to pay attention to. If you've been reading the story, you already know you got to have this. This is a major connect. And we talked about this with the free comic book day, but um, this is going to play out into a lot of what we're going to see going forward with Draken. Um, certainly it makes you wonder this upcoming Draken series is, is this the Draken we're going to see? Are we going to see Kimberly Hart Draken for Draken one through three? Incredible. Double first appearance, we put on there about Rita as a Dark Ranger, very important, but also getting to see Kimberly as Lord Draken. Boogie bow! First book on the Reader Buzz, we've already said that James Tynan run on Batman so good that we're probably going to have it each time there's an issue coming out. We're still getting into that start of that Joker world with Batman number 95. Yes, and this issue definitely continued that story. We get to see um, what's going on with the underbroker. We see his, his um, identity revealed. We see the corruption within the GCPD. Um, we see the fact that the underbroker is working for the Joker. And we know that the Joker war story um, is, is upon us and is in Joker, as usual, kind of uh, has his his hands within Gotham City more than maybe Batman originally anticipated. But we also got to see a new Bat costume. Now, I will say people, a lot of people are excited about this. And, you know, people come to us and they want our advice. I will say we've seen new Bat costumes before. They tend to have a very short shelf life, a few months where people care about them. The most recent was when James Gordon donned that kind of mechanical Bat suit. Um, there's, but 
yeah, it's not something I would get overly hyped up. This to me is a, is a reader buzz book of all reader buzz books. Um, great read, continued the story. And that Matina variant is amazing. Yeah, and sticking with that from Batman, we're going over to Batgirl number 47. This was another great book, great story, and also had that great cover B, right? Yeah, so hot take, this was a better read than Batman. Um, I, this is one I, I really wanted to talk about. I was excited to talk about today because um, I am a fan of the interior art. I think the interior art on this book, it, it's kind of a whimsical kind of feminine art that really kind of works with Batgirl. I don't think it worked on this issue, though. This issue is dark. If you did not read Batgirl, I implore you to read Batgirl 47. This is part two of a killing joke. We get played out right here. We get the Joker returning for a little B&E action on Barbara Gordon, um, looking to kind of redo a past event. Now, Barbara Gordon now has a sensor in her back, which is allowing her to stand upright and to not be paralyzed. This whole issue culminates with an epic battle. Barbara is not willing to be a victim this time. She does not want to go through that. And she fights back. And when she ultimately looks like she is going to lose the battle, and Joker takes control of the controlling device that controls her back, she savagely rips the device out of her back so that the Joker cannot take control, telling him, you will not control me. You have no say over what happens to my body. Joker, in fleeing the scene, is hit in the back with a spear from Barbara Gordon, paralyzing him. And the issue ends with him laying on the floor in agony, paralyzed, but able to acknowledge that Barbara won up him there. Um, so I don't know how that's going to play out. Now, of course, we've got three Jokers. But uh, it does look like the Joker is paralyzed at the end of this issue. and Maybe uh, two and a half Jokers. <laughs> right. Um, he is laying prone on the bathroom floor. And uh, um, not a good look for the end of the Joker. But like I said, great issue. Amazingly well written. I like the art. I'm not bashing the art. But the, the story was so dark and so um, tense. It didn't fit the story for this one. Yeah, yeah. It felt very light and, um, and, and didn't, didn't necessarily give me the intensity that I was looking for in that story. Yeah, but keeping with all that, we're going right into the next one. We're talking about Detective Comics number 1024, or 1024, I guess you could say. It just right. sounds funny saying it that way. But it does. there's another great one. Right, continue again, Joker War. We're going to keep talking about these Joker War books. I think that these, these tie-in books are going to continue to be important. Um, I think that whoever is in charge of the whole editing of this, the, this Bat family, and I apologize for not knowing that, um, is doing a hell of a job with this story because James Tynion is doing a great job with what he's writing on Batman, but these, these kind of offshoot books have been amazing, um, and they've really added to the story. Um, I also would be remiss not to say uh, these Bermejo cover bees, oh, my God, incredible. Um, just really, really, really lifelike cover bees. So I think the work – you mentioned the, the Batgirl one, which I didn't even talk about, the, the excellent – um, uh, Dodson cover, but I think between um, the the Batgirl, the Matina, and the Bermejo, you can't go wrong with the cover bees on these Joker War releases. But yeah, I mean, I always feel I want to say hypocrite, but I know of talking about Marvel, and I've said it on this show before, where a lot of the Marvel ones with those events, I read mostly just the events and, and catch up on the tie-ins later. But I've actually this Joker War one, I'm all in and been picking up the tie-ins, and each of the story, like you said, they've all fit. Per perfectly together so i'm enjoying that whole overarching story and not just that main event going on in batman but either way another great issue and the next one we're talk about we're shifting over to any for a minute this is the one that was no stranger to this channel we've talked about this title we've had the creators on here we've talked about it so much we're huge fans of this and we're talking about that little tiny tin man we're talking about canto this is that one shot clockwork fairies right yeah but you know what brian i'm disappointed I, I got to say it. I got to be honest. I'm disappointed, man. Why so blue, Panda Bear? You know, retailers, you're not listening to us. We keep trying to tell you how great Canto is. This book was amazing. This, let me tell you something. I was worried about a one shot, and I think probably retailers were too. Um, this was a great kind of jumping back into the world of Canto after having 
um, kind of missed our friend for a while. Um, and I enjoyed this book, but retailers did not jump on board with this clearly. And you can tell that because if you go on eBay right now, there's not a 125 currently listed as we're recording this. There's some one in tens and the one in tens are listed at about $35, three and a half times ratio for this one shot. Uh, the last one in 25s that have sold, have sold for about $50. So twice ratio. I think this price is only going to go up because the San Diego Comic-Con variants, Brian, are hitting about 100. So I think when you're looking at this, this is the same thing we've seen before with Kanto. This is a character that people love. This is a book people believe in. This is a book people feel passionate about. We saw it from the moment we saw this book. But you know what? This, there's, you, at this point, if you don't realize, there's no pump and dump with Brian and I. When we, when we do go out on a limb and feel passionate about something and say, this is a book that we love and we think you will too. Um, it's coming from a place of, of really genuine um, love for that book. And it's no coincidence that w we've seen people adopt that with Canto. Um, I know you've got a couple Instagram followers who you were, uh, La La Schultz, you were actively trying to get those. Uh, yeah, we were those, teamed up. Right, trying to get those IDW San Diego Comic-Con exclusives. So this, people are diehards. Uh, you know, you look at the way that, that even the pin sold out for San Diego Comic-Con. So um, definitely, definitely a winner. Um, be on the lookout for those one in tens and one in 25s. If you're at your LCS and you see somebody Scott one, um, I think maybe people are not aware of what they are doing on the secondary market. Yeah. So if anyone follows us on Instagram, we were, or even if you yourself was trying to get some of those IDW yes. San Diego Comic-Con exclusives, we know it was, um, it was a gauntlet. It was, it was a good trial because they made you earn it two days ago. And then the, the website didn't work too well. I was supposed to go up again yesterday. I say yesterday, this, we're recording this Wednesday night. Same issue. So then finally Wednesday at 1, 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. They did go up and I managed to get to, uh, you mentioned Lala Schultz. Both of us were like, hey, I'll try to get some. You try to get some and whoever, whichever. We both were able to get some. So stay tuned on this channel because since we both got two, we are going to be doing a giveaway at some point when we get those in hand to give one of those away because we know people out there just as diehard fans as we are as Canto weren't able to get to the website, weren't able to get to a copy of it. So we will have one of those San Diego Comic Cons to give away. So stay tuned to that. Make sure you subscribe to Superman's Comics. Act. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that bell so you get notified of those videos. But I think another reason why people weren't looking at this book is there was another big indie book that people had their eyes on. And we're talking about that good Frank Gogol book from Source Point Press, and we're talking about No Heroin Number One. Right, huge smash success again from Source Point Press and Frank Gogol with No Heroin. This is an amazing book, and we've read this book. We interviewed Frank Gogol as well and talked about this book. Um, this is a book with deeply personal roots for Frank Gogol, and I think a lot of times when a writer comes from that place, uh, you tend to get some of your best work. So this this is a, a book that really stands out on its own. And, and we've covered two now releases of Frank Gogol's with Dead End Kids and with uh, No Heroin. And we're starting to see like a consistency where even though he's from a very small publisher who has some hits, but certainly it's very reliant on the artists themselves to get their work out there. Frank is a guy who is relentless in his promotion and his, his um, belief in his own product. And because of that, you've seen uh, variants dominate on the secondary market. Uh, the, even getting the, the Temple Smith incentive for this book is something that you're not seeing on a lot of these types of small press books. So definitely shout out to Frank Gold. This is a great book. I'm going to be on board for this entire series. If you didn't get a chance to check this one out um, and you, you know, you're having a tough time getting those first prints, be on the lookout. There's going to be later prints for number one. Um, and another interesting fact, Brian, Dead End Kids released the same day Canto released. So I find it very interesting that now Canto comes out again the same day another for big Frank Gogol release drops. Yeah, and it's funny because Frank Gogol and David Boo are good friends. Also, nothing about no heroin. There's a bunch of great store exclusives for that. If you want to see some of those, you can get over to exclusivevariants.com. 
a bunch of those are up there as well. And there's even more coming out, right? They've been launching them left and right, and each one's been selling out. So Definitely. And for sure, if you can't get enough No Heroin or you can't get enough Canto, be sure to join us August 15th and 16th for Mainframe Comic Con right here on the Simpleman's Comics YouTube channel, as well as MainframeComicCon.com, because there's going to be a panel with David Boer and Drew Zucker, the creators of Canto, as well as a panel with Frank Vogel, the creator of No Heroin and Dead End Kids. But the next one we're going to move along into the reader buzz is that Chew Number One. This is another great book, right? That's right. Switching the spelling from C H E W to C H U, we're getting a brand new offshoot within the uh, Rob Gilroy Chew universe. And uh, there's definitely a Chew faithful um, behind this book. So this one had major reader buzz. There's also been uh, a lot of talk of this book becoming a a, a possible uh, or the book that th this stemmed from becoming a um a optioned property i think it's been optioned before um coming to whether or not it's animated or live action um certainly a lot of talk about that so it, this is one of those classic indie type indie image titles that kind of was hitting during that period where it seemed like every image number one was a hit. So glad to see uh, the, them kind of continuing to keep the fan base intrigued and interested. And I think a lot of these image series that have completed, we saw this with, uh, um, you know, the Jason Aaron with his God Damned. I think that they can kind of come back with these like offshoot stories and one shots. And certainly Robert Kirkman is doing it right now with Walking Dead. Then the last one we want to talk about in the reader buzz, we talked about in this past last call, our FOC show, we talked about that Snake Eyes origin that reprints G.I. Joe number 26 to 27, right? Right. Released just this week from IDW, we got that G.I. Joe Complete Silence that also reprinted that 1984 G.I. Joe 21, as well as that 2008 G.I. Joe 21.5. Now, I had to laugh at Brian, who, even though I'm a huge G.I. Joe fan, made me add this one to the list <laughs> in the reader buzz section, because I don't know what you're reading, because there's no words in this book, but <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is the uh, picture buzz section. That's the best books I like to read. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Real easy read. You can get through this one nice and easy, but classic, classic, classic issue. Um, I, first appearance of Storm Shadow. Um, reprinted, which I, I think doesn't get talked about enough, Brian, when we're talking about the silent issue. We tend to talk about its iconic, um, you know, this iconic nature of the fact that it's an entire comic book with no dialogue. But if you've ever had a chance to sit down and read the book, you don't need dialogue in the book. You, you, you're able to follow the story and you kind of become engrossed with it early on and you don't really notice um, the lack of dialogue, and certainly it does a lot to really character build Snake Eyes. Um, but it's also the first appearance of Storm Shadow, so we're getting that retold, which is going to become a major thing. It's no coincidence. This book and then the book that we just talked about on FOC, as you mentioned, which is reprinting 26 and 27. 21, 26, and 27 are the three issues that are the most key to Snake Eyes in the entire G.I. Joe run. And it is no doubt um, that the reason why IDW is reprinting these books is the upcoming Snake Eyes solo movie. I think uh, it's a good time to be a Joe fan with a lot going on in the comics, a lot going on with the toy line, and a lot going on with the future of G.I. Joe cinema. That's going to wrap up the Reader Buzz. I always like the Reader Buzz. It's always my favorite section of the week. But we're getting to the shiny object section, and that is going to be the Variant Buzz. first variant we're going to talk about is that amazing spider-man sins rising prelude number one has had that boss logic variant right yeah i just think at this point this is as simple as boss logic has a giant following and he has a fan base and a very loyal fan base that extends beyond comics um he's a pop culture icon and him doing covers it, it, it's a no-brainer. He's only going to get attention on his covers and full transparency. I've been trying to get a Boss Logic cover made since before Brian and I started a variant company since we were working with another website. Um, and it, but that is definitely a bucket list thing that I, I would like to do because I just think that he is a transcendent talent. And I think that his, his work with Marvel and DC and, and places like that, it's just beginning. I think you're only going to see more big releases from him. Yeah, so if we can't get hold of a boss logic variant, might have to go one level down and get that secretary logic. 
<laughs> Got dad jokes. But we're going to move on to the next variant. We're going to talk about that Thor number two third print that came out between Thor and between Venom. These are probably two of the highest titles. And, of course, they have that similarity between the two, right, with the author? Right. And then you have, so, obviously, with Downey and Cates, no doubt. And then you've got so much going on with Thor, too. Um, you've got the tease of the Marvel DC crossover. You've got the Black Winter cameo. Um, and then you've got the Strange Academy preview that went into that issue. Um, so much going on with that. That's going to be a key issue, Brian, no doubt. Um, because, like we always say, lottery ticket, you got three different things to pull from um, within that one book. Yeah, and the last one we talk about in Variant Buzz, I mean – these titles, this is probably one of the better weeks we've had with comic releases. There's so many bangers on this one. And the last one for Variant Buzz we want to talk about is that win number two, that killer Peach Momoko variant. Yeah, I think we had so many bangers, like you said, and so much reader buzz between Joker War and some hot indie titles. I think this is a book that got slept on from a reader buzz perspective because it's certainly a book I was excited to read. I know a lot of people enjoyed issue number one. A lot of people, though, had that, like, I got to read more before I kind of make my decision. But it's one of those things where because of so many other titles, this one got kind of pushed back. But you can't hold Peach Momoko back. So... Nonetheless, this cover is still being talked about, still selling for well above ratio. Peach is going to continue to do variants on this series. Um, I think this is going to be an interesting 1 in 25 variant set to see how it does kind of going forward. I imagine it will do as well as Wind as a title does, and it's definitely one with some buzz on it. Remember that first look deal with Netflix. Yeah, real quick before we get into your long-term play section, I also – this is kind of irregular to me because usually, if I remember correctly, the week of San Diego Comic-Con, the release schedule is not as strong as it was this week. So between COVID, between Comic-Con at home, this was actually a big delightful surprise, if, if you ask me. Yeah, they're definitely if, – if, if we would have been on a schedule with San Diego Comic-Con and it wouldn't have been done and moved last second, you probably wouldn't be looking at a heavy release week this week. So, yeah, definitely a great week and then a lot to be excited for. And, again – Stay tuned. Be on the lookout. We're going to have San Diego Comic-Con coverage coming for you right here on the Civil Ones Comics YouTube channel. So make sure you hit that bell for notifications. So that just leaves us for one more category, and we're going to talk about Jack's long-term play. In the long-term play this week, this is another book that's gotten a lot of attention. Issue number one, issue number two, we've talked about them on Three Up, Three Down this week. But but we're also talking about Strange Academy number one, that second print. Now, there's a lot of books I like this week from a long-term standpoint. I like um, Ranger Slayer number one a lot. I like uh, um, No Heroin number one a lot. And I honestly think Batgirl 47 has some le legs long-term because we know how beloved Killing Joke is, Brian. I know you're a diehard Killing Joke fan. So I know that if you weren't aware of the tie-in to that book, you're going to want to check out Batgirl. But but I really have to say, I can't go against the market with this one, man. The market is on board with Strange Academy, and they're on board in a big way. I don't have to sell you on the value of Strange Academy. We've certainly talked about it. We've talked about the lottery ticket aspect of so many first appearances for one cover price. Um, but also, there are certain trends that we've been talking about on Simple Men's Comics, and make no mistake, we've been talking about it long before the market was ready to talk about it. And one of those is these late printings. Uh, the market started to acknowledge them but the mainstream comic buyer wasn't ready to do that yet we started to notice that we started to talk it up it's a big principle behind our 100 back great back issues to be on the lookout for uh, an amazing ebook that we've got dollar 95 on simplemanscomics.com volume two coming very soon you can check out that list weekly 10 books right here on the simplemans comics youtube channel on monday nights um, as well as all week on replay but because of that, I definitely, this plays right into that. This is a late printing, new cover art, and you're getting all the characters right on the cover. So it hits everything you could want. Now, certainly there are, are, are covers from the first print that feature all the characters on the cover. But when it's all said and done and this all shakes out, you mentioned a big release week. You mentioned San Diego. This book is not going to be printed like several of those other books. Um, and because of that, I think you're already seeing the spikes on the secondary market because clearly supply was nowhere near the demand for this because a lot has happened since FOC of this book. 
the Strange Academy, the first print, has probably doubled in price since the first uh, since this book hit FOC because of that. Naturally, the second print is in more demand. And we're seeing less barriers of uh, success being put up in front of these late printings. Previously, they had to jump through a lot of hoops before a book took off. I mean, we're just now starting to talk about Edge of Spider-Verse 2 late prints and Miles Morales and Ultimate Fallout 4 late prints. We should have been talking about those books, what, Brian, like 10 years ago? Uh, or at least Miles, um, maybe Gwen five years ago. But here we are, we're just talking about them now. I feel like it's it, this is the market changing and how fast the market can move. So something to pay attention to. And just because there's a second print and it's done big money and just because there's a first print, don't sleep on a third print. Print If they do a third print, and I imagine they will, um, best believe every retailer is going to order it and it's not going to sell for crap over cover when it comes out. Doesn't matter. It'll still be a great long-term buy. I'm a believer in Strange Academy long-term. Seems like a lot of you guys out there are as well. But either way, let us know in the comments section, how do you feel about Strange Academy? Um, is there a particular character in this book so far that you already are feeling like is the favorite um, that you're the most interested in? Let us know. We'd love to hear it. Um, and let us know how you're loving the series in general. Yeah, I think it's great. I mean, we're two issues in and to get that much buzz out of it. Um, I know a lot of people are hoping Disney Plus. A lot of people are liking the characters in it. I've enjoyed the story. It's kind of a, a younger, like a younger age type story to me. Like I said on the videos here before, it, it reminds me, I want to see it like a, a John Hughes Breakfast Club 16 Candles type movie TV show. But either way, I'm enjoying the first two issues. Glad I got them for cover price because I definitely wouldn't be paying the amount of money that they're selling for right now. But I still think it's a great series and I'm excited to see where it goes. So another great long-term play. And that's our bolo list for you guys this week. Remember, Jack said that we will be covering some San Diego Comic-Con news. So make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel and click that bell notification, right? Absolutely. And make sure you're paying attention to simplemanscomics.com because we're going to be throwing up some articles on the site all throughout the weekend with some news and information, as well as be following at Simplemans Comics on Instagram, as well as at aka underscore Mr. Dot Bolo and at Jack P. DeMeo on, in, on Twitter, as well as at Simplemans Comics on Twitter, because we're going to be dropping all of that information on social all weekend long. That being said, guys, this is Brian Jack with Superman's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.